Well, what's up everybody, my name is of course Tom and welcome to TechStream. Today, thanks to the guys at Thermaltake, we're taking a look at their new View, View 23 TG ARGB. First of all though, as always, let's roll on that intro. So, as I said, what we've got here is a relatively new case here from Thermaltake. It is their View 23 TG ARGB. You kind of get a bit from the title there. It is a tempered glass side panelled case, okay, and it has addressable RGB fans. One thing I did notice, the box does say it has two tempered glass side panels, it doesn't just has the one. So, this is a sort of mid ATX, relatively short in height, but it is quite a wide case, a bit wider than than a lot of cases, so it does mean you're going to have plenty of air cooler clearance. We'll get more onto that later anyway. So outside it's fairly standard, we're going to do our typical review, we're going to go around the outside, around the, out, around the inside, and then come up with some conclusions. So we'll start off by popping off this side panel. The side panels on this are both just held on with some nice chunky thumb screws, so no problems getting them off. And you'll notice this side panel is very similar to the side panel that was on the I remember now the level 20 MT also very similar to what was on the Versa J24 I reviewed a couple of weeks ago as well so rather than being a panel held on with four screws on the outside it's actually held on with two screws on the back and then it removes in a similar way to a standard side panel so it's actually got a metal frame around the outside with a black painted border it is a little bit tinted but nothing too dark all in all very nice solid panel. I very do I do very much like this fitment that they that Thermaltake have been using for a couple of their cases recently, whereby you treat it like a normal side panel. The four thumb screw option was very nice. I did like it to start off with, but it did get a bit samey samey. And putting the side panels on always it resulted in loads of front fingerprints. So we'll get that one out of the way. Front panel here, okay, you got the three included fans at the front. There's also an included fan at the back that's not RGB. Three, pa three fans at the front behind this plastic, this is plastic, okay, sort of a waved front. This reminds me very much of, I think it's the Cooler Master Sonata, I think it was, that was, oh, got to be 10, 10 or 15 years ago now. Aluminium front it was with a wave and a door that used to be out open. Um, so yeah, we look a wavy plastic front, heavily tinted. These fans, if I'm looking at them from this side, if I can watch it, spin this around and show you. If you look in, the fans are actually quite bright. But when we look at them from the front, they don't seem very bright at all. That's because it is a very heavy tint. Now, the front panel, to remove that, should you need to remove it, simply grab it by the bottom and pull. Front I.O. will stay attached. Okay, Ventilation is just down this one side, but you do have a good sort of inch and a half of ventilated side panel. There's also obviously a cutout at the bottom. Decent amount of clearance from the fans, so I do think that this case will have offer, well I know that, I can tell you now, this case will offer a lot more airflow than the Level 20 MT did. And this is actually basically exactly the same chassis as the Level 20 MT, just with a different front panel. So we do have very similar front I.O. with a power button, a pair of USB 3s, some audios, a reset button, a power button and the RGB button. We'll go through that just quickly now. Obviously this is addressable RGB. It does mean that you can actually sync this up with your motherboard using the included cables, but you do not have to use that. You can just simply cycle through the options with the button on the top. You've got sort of roundy roundies, solid light or uh, fades. So these are the roundy roundy ones. If we get, get going through them, we've got solid lights, uh, sorry, fading lights, flashing, should we say, all the different colors. You do, of course, have off in there somewhere and static colors. So there's a good selection of colors. You, can, you will find something that will suit your build if you're not going to be connected in for the sync option. Also on the top, we do have an intake filter where you will have space for mounting a 120 or 240 radiator. The rear will also take a 120. The front will take anything up to a 360. And there's a nice big cutout here to fit your fan and radiator combo in the front here, and it doesn't actually interfere with the hard drive cages, so you're not gonna have any of that problem either. You'll also notice by here, we have another intake for a side-mounted radiator. Now this, if I'm fitting an AIO, this would personally be my option, because 
you have a completely ventilated and grilled side on uh, grilled part on this side panel. So as long as you've got plenty of clearance outside of your case, I would be putting it here. If you don't have any clearance, if you're putting this up against a wall, top mount would be best. But I do, th I do, do think there with one of my, um, Thermaltake's RGB ones, look very, very cool. So that's the front panel. Um, you've had a quick look. We'll pop this back panel off. I'm just going to unplug these lights. I just got them sort of piggybacked off of a power supply. And we'll take a look at the back side of the case. This side panel does obviously just remove like a standard side panel. There is a magnetic filter on it. And if we just spin this around, now you will see that this side panel here is also got some, some sort of uh, filtration, not a massive amount. And best way for cleaning this just going to be run a hoover down this side here or pop it off from the inside okay so this was the this is the little sink controller it's been used on quite a few of their cases now i like it but it is missing one thing now the three big white connectors these are the three front fans there's also a connection here to connect our three pin rear fan okay we do have our led out for connecting to some additional rgb strips now thermaltake don't do them at the moment but you could could butcher this together yourself to use pretty much any addressable RGB strip that you find. It must be 5 volts. Just remember that. Okay. We then, then have a motherboard in connection here at the top. So this is where you connect one of the included cables. There's one for uh, sort of like Gigabyte and everyone. There's another one for Asus because they use slightly different connections. And then we have serial ATA power. No more Molex connectors. All of my shouting at companies for including Molex connectors in 2018 is definitely paying off. We have a nice big motherboard hole. This is where we would mount our side mounted AIO. Couple of um, holes, no rubber grommets on this case, but we do have nice rounded holes for cable pass throughs. I did remember on the level 20, and it's exactly the same here because it's effectively the same chassis, the controller covers up part of this hole and it, it doesn't make it impossible, it just makes it a bit more awkward to get like your 24 pin through here, but it is possible. We've got a nice big cutout behind the motherboard tray. We've got a two and a half inch uh, hard drive or SSD mount on the back. Down here at the bottom, held in with thumb screws, we've got a couple of steel sleds here for mounting either two and a half or full size three and a half inch hard drives. Two there. Power supply. As you remember, if you had a look at the level 20 MT review I did, now you don't have oodles of ring for power supplies in here, but basically any normal sized power supply, uh, my standard test rig one, which I'll just grab. This one of them will take 700 watt power supplies. It's about 140 mil long, and this fits. It's not even modular, and it fits with plenty of space for bundling all of your unused cables in. So people that are going, oh, there's not enough space for hard uh, for power supplies. Yeah, there's not enough space for power supplies. If you're going to try and put something like a 1200 watt power supply in here, which um, yeah, you'd be daft because you're not going to be buying a budget orientated case like this and putting a 1200 watt power supply in it now. Um, also, power supply is filtered, but it is one of these horrible sort of clip-in pieces of mesh. It's not a magnetic filter or anything. Would like to see a magnetic filter there, but not the end of the world. Uh, that's pretty much it for this back part. Okay, so there's plenty of cable routing holes for 8v8 pin EPS. Over there. There's also a few located down by here for passing your front IOs, for passing your graphics card power through. So yeah, there's plenty of cable routing options. Quick look on the back, IO shield, 120mm radiator, 7 PCIe slots, power supply. Nothing too fancy dancy. And we'll take a quick look now at the motherboard side. So we do have a full length power supply cover. I did mention earlier there's a cutout for the radiator. For another um, 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive mount. Here was those holes I mentioned earlier on for power supply, uh, graphics card power, front IO, things like that. There's also a couple slightly higher up should you be using like a micro ATX. Uh, motherboard in here. Little window to show off your fancy little stickers on your power supply. Which Thermaltake do actually have a habit. What they do is if you look, they're reversed so that when you have it in the power in the case, yeah, that way around, you actually get it the right way up in their little window. So that's about it for the Thermaltake. View 23 TG. We've had a quick look at around the front, around the outside. 
Um, it does have standard USB 3, there's no Type-C connections or anything like that, HD audio on the front. It's, it's a nice case, it's well built, it does have its downfalls, it's not perfect, but again it is cheap. Now I will say if you do side mount your AIO, you will find you're a bit more restricted when it comes to graphics card lengths. If you've got a graphics card that's going to interfere with your radiator or anything like that, you will basically I believe you're limited to around about the 260mm mark rather than going full length. But again, as I've mentioned with other parts in this case review, when you're building a case, a bud this will be a budget PC case, when you're building a budget system, you're not going to be using graphics cards that are three foot long. You're not going to be using 1200 watt power supplies. It's not the sort of thing that you'd put into a budget orientated case like this. So do I actually like the View 23 TG8 RGB? Yes. I do like it. It does have its downfalls. I, the sync controller irritates me that there is no PWM support. I just wish that I could connect those front and rear fans up to my motherboard to sync the speeds up. Come on guys, it's not brain surgery. I've said this in every case that's had this same controller because thermal tape do have a very big habit of reusing chassis, entire chassis and changing plastics, which when you produce a good chassis like this, I don't have a problem with them reusing the chassis to put new front panels and plastics on, it means that basically they can produce a large variety of cases for minimal tooling costs. They have actually used removable PCIe slot covers, there's none of these horrible snappy off jobbies. It, overall, yeah, it's a very nice case. The styling, me personally, I'm not a fan of this wave. It's, it reminds me of, it's a bit retro. Um, but different horses for different courses, as they say. It is at least well built. There's no doubt about that. I don't think I've had a poorly built thermal take case recently in the studio. Everything that they come out with now, what they buy re using the same chassis for many different cases, they can basically spend a bit more money on the R&D and the builds. They get more for their money by buying more. So you've got good quality steel, you've got nice rounded edges. There's almost no sharp corners or anything on this case. I mean, I've played with cases now and you, you build them and you finish and your hands are cut to shreds. But no, well built, well thought out, few little niggles. Like I said, airflow isn't amazing by having the full plastic, but there is more airflow in this one than there is in the level 20 by having a lot more ventilation down that side and also up from the bottom. Front intake on the top, the only problem I don't have is the, the front filtration could do with being better. They could do with putting a filter over the front of those fans somehow. It would at least improve the um, the cleanliness of the fans and mean they stay clean for longer. What you could do is actually put the fans to the inside of the case rather than having them outside of the case and then put like a, a magnetic filter across the front. If, you, if you're living in a dusty area, that is something I would definitely at least debate. But overall, the View 23 TGA RGB from Thermaltake, yeah, I'm going to give it a nice thumbs up. It's not exactly uh, wallet busting, it's well built, it looks nice, looks are always subjective. I do like the tempered glass side panel that fits like a normal side panel. And one of the other things they did, I forgot to mention this, they put a little lip across the top and the bottom here. And partly for shipping, I'm going to say, but also in use. It, this now tempered glass is very, very strong but is very, very susceptible to knocks. And by having this plastic, this metal, sorry, not plastic, metal strip across the top, it protects the top edge, top leading edge of the panel. And it just means that nothing can hit it, which means you shouldn't have any problems. Not that many people do, but it's just one of those little thoughts that when you, th when, when you see it and you think about it, you go, that's actually quite clever. So yeah, um, they've definitely put a decent bit of engineering into it. And um, yeah, it's a big thumbs up. So that's about it for, t for today, guys. Sorry I didn't get a bill put into this. Unfortunately, I've got some hardware problems in that um, my test bench is missing a graphics card, and without a graphics card, it doesn't post and boot, so I can't really put it in here because it won't do anything. Like I said, I have fired up the fans. I did put in some B-roll earlier for you just so that you can have a quick look around the whole case. I did show you all the fans and everything illuminated as well. So, yeah, that is it for today, guys. If you've liked my video, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, not a problem. Comment in the section down below. I always take the time to come back and answer you all. Regardless of how long this video has been live, I always see all your comments and I do come back and answer them. So that's about it. Now, if you want to see more of me, I will be back next week. If you click that subscribe button and the little notification bell, you will be notified. And on that note, bye for now.